Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my floss tube channel. I'm happy to be here with you today to talk about my stitching and creating and plans and also a little bit of reading at the end. I hope that you have been well, that you are weathering the storms that have hit across America and also just the worldwide hard time that we're having throughout COVID. I'm doing so much better. I think you can tell from my voice another couple, two, three weeks have passed and Although my lungs are still weak when I try to walk the with the Walmart, <laughs> I have a little bit of trouble, but I'm feeling so much better and my oxygen has been returned. I'm just um, being careful and resting when I need to. So thank you for all your prayers. I have a bunch of happy mail to share and a little bit of stitching that was sent my way from um, here in America and also abroad. And I have a couple of finishes that I wanted to start with and a new start to show you. I'm titling this um, video red um, stitching because red is one of my favorite colors and I had so much fun in the month of February stitching on red things. This was a primitive hair freebie that I showed you as plans that I've intended to stitch for over a year. Finally got to it but I had a lot of fun with this design. It was very quick. It's on her blog for primitive hair. I'll try to link it below, but a lot of people have done this. You've seen it. And I used my, um, let's see. I stitched the whole card of Weeks Dye Works Cayenne. I had used it on something else. So I finished that off and used some wool from my, um, stash and some shared from friends and then French general fabric on the back. I use this in a lot of things. You'll see it in a lot of my designs. I kept it in this um, tiered tray and it was kind of a last minute thing because I finished these literally on Valentine's night, but that's okay. They'll be ready for next year and I can keep them out a little bit longer. This was just a scrap of Ada that I had. Uh, it was kind of grungy, but I cut it in a heart shape and pinned a little felt heart and a little um, scrap of fabric where it was closed up. This one goes with my haul. I'll show you where I got this pattern from. It was exactly as charted on this pattern I borrowed, but I feel like these little um, boy and girl stitches look crazy long armed. <laughs> my husband has really long arms and I have short arms. So if I had adjusted the girl, I would be more accurate, but I thought it turned out cute. And I just used some more of the felt and a um, homespun check and one of these little 20, 21 charms that I got from Helen D. So that one was a fun one. I just made this one up myself. There wasn't a pattern for this other than um, my little charting that I borrowed from a book that I'll show you in my haul. And then let's see, two or three more of these little guys. This was the other um, primitive hair freebie and he's kind of floppy. I don't know how I ended up making that one. This is stuff with um, sawdust, but this one didn't get super full. I still like it. And uh, that one was done with DMC. I think it was 343, but I can't remember for sure. A dark red and it's got a little bell and button in the corner there and homespun on the back and wool. So these just kind of set all together until I was ready to finish them all in one blow. Took a little bit over an hour probably. This one I top stitched because it was the first one I showed you last week or last video and it was real wonky at the top. So I just thought I'm not gonna try to stitch it again. I'm just gonna top stitch it. And I like it for its wonkiness. This is drop cloth. I have a lot of that around because I've made all my curtains in my house with that. So I actually like the way that one turned out. Let's see, two more little hearts here. And I'll probably end up giving some of these away here and there, but it's fun to make them up. More drop cloth and that quilt fabric. And this is a Kansas Troubles charm pack square. 
I'll put a ribbon. I might put a button there or something. It wasn't quite completely done, but I have this whole pile <laughs> of little finishes. And then this was my um, original brainchild that I kind of made these to accompany. I wanted to make some perpetual Valentines that we could just add to each year, kind of like the um, hearts on the door idea I told you about last video. And so I made these pockets that are, um, I didn't end up using interfacing. I just used some thicker fabric on a lot of them, like the um, denim here from an old pair of pants I had worn out. <laughs> I can't throw anything away. Um, and I used the same French general fabric and did some top stitching. That um, problem I had with my embroidery being too close together, I just cut out each name and glued it on so that it kind of didn't stand out quite as much. I mean, you can still tell that it's separate, but then um, I wrote notes to all the kids on just a little index card and they ended up in there. So there's six of these and I think these turned out really cute. The kids wanted to keep the Valentine cards or take them out. I said, no, let's keep them in here so you can just read them again next year and we'll just add to them. So I thought those turned out really fun if you want to file that idea away if you haven't already made it um, from my last time. But those were my fully finished objects, my FFOs. I did have a um, chart finish that's part of a large project. I've shown y'all the Lizzie Kate Halloween rules. I'm doing this with my kids in mind. I think it's really cute. And I was able to finish the first two blogs for January and February. And I'm actually gonna have to do more than two, one block a month if I wanna get it done by Halloween. So I started on the next one to visit a haunted house. And I changed the puppy as I had said last time to match our new puppy. And this wasn't what I intended to spend a lot of time stitching on, but as y'all know, Texas has really been through the ringer with storms and ice and we did lose power in our house. Um, someone asked me that morning on uh, Monday, have you lost power? And I said, no, we're fine. And then it went off like 10 minutes later and it did not come back on for three days. So um, we had some shaky days where we weren't sure if our pipes were gonna be okay, especially our hot water heater was totally frozen. It thawed so far without any damage. So we were very grateful, but this is just on an even weave um, fabric and it was easy to see. I was in my husband's office. I'll insert a picture of us all piled in. I was sleeping on his couch in his office and he had an air mattress. And the first night he slept in the lobby because we had, I said on Instagram that we had around 30, we had over 50 the first night that were sheltering with us. And a lot of them we didn't know. And so my husband wanted to stay in the lobby and make sure everybody was okay. There was an elderly couple that was um, suffering with dementia they were very confused and um, it was really sad, but we were able to really, I think, save some lives that night, especially with that elderly couple and, um, some of the other people. We had a few homeless people that were living in their car that came and stayed. So it was a, um, hard situation, but also very gratifying that we were able to help and provide a safe place. Our, our church lost power for, I think, 10 minutes the entire time, even though all the surrounding areas were affected. And I couldn't help but think that was just God's provision for us. So we were grateful and I was grateful to just stitch away at <laughs> my 28 count even weave and have a lot of fun with that project. So that's what I ended up working on a lot. And then when I got home, sort of to celebrate our um, return to power and light <laughs> so that I could see, I did go ahead and start a new sampler that um, I hinted at last time. I don't know where my brain is. Um, it's funny how you pick up things from decades ago. I said I was gonna be doing a Bristol Meyer sampler. <laughs> I used to work with pharmaceutical companies, so Bristol Meyer Squibb came to my head. Bristol Orphanage. Louisa Coolamore, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, was one that I thought was a little bit more um, reasonable in the size. It's still a pretty good size. It's 246 by 280, but um, I thought I want to know a little bit more about Bristol samplers, and um, I have a talk coming up in our guild this March. And so I thought, let me go ahead and 
and get that with my Christmas money that I wasn't able to spend until I was feeling better. So I went ahead and started and I've had such a good time with this sampler. I'm sort of eating my words. I said, I don't like alphabets. Alphabets are boring. <laughs> I wanted to say something, but this is just such a a special piece considering Louise's history. You know, Nicola does such a beautiful job of sharing um, the story of Louisa and all of the things they knew about her. She lost her mother very young and then her father not much later and um, only had one child that she lost. So just a lot of suffering. Um, and I've sort of bonded with her <laughs> as I've stitched this. I don't know what it is about the antique samplers for me. I have a, I guess, a colorful imagination. So I'm, I'm thinking of the girls as I stitch and I'm just thinking about their lives. And it seems a funny passage through time to be stitching something so old and uh, at the in the same way and you know it's just it's an interesting experience but this fabric is a lot darker than the recommended i imagine but i do like it it's um something i got as a mystery linen from um it just says mystery linen from hand dyed fibers by vicky clayton i hadn't seen any linen on her site the last time i checked but i don't know if she'll put some back it was very very affordable and not all of my friends really enjoyed stitching on it. They thought it was a little bit slippery, but I haven't had any problems. I really do like it. Um, I say I haven't had any problems. As with most linen, there are some threads that are very, very fine. And this one seems to have a little bit more than Zweigart. Um, I don't see an orange stripe. I'm pretty sure this is not Zweigart. So I have had a few moments where I've accidentally stitched it over three, but it became apparent really quickly and I was able to compensate and, and pull back out. So, but for some reason, the letters have been really <coughs> pretty easy to stitch because, um, you know, there's no border on this and you can easily tell if a letter's not lining up, if it's looking wrong. One time I did start this letter off of the wrong leg of the A. So this was here and I had just done half of the letter P and I realized, whoa, 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 I was able to pull it out and this one doesn't line up. So you do have to watch um, the chart, but for the most part, they all line up perfectly on the same line. And I think those letters are just so pretty. I'm using a Threadworks thread as I like to do. I had to turn my camera because initially I was facing a different direction to give you a different view, but it was too dark. So now I have a few things that have kind of gotten behind me. This was the color I got with my with my Christmas money from Threadworks and it's called Lipstick Red. I think it's 1090 and it's very variegated. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a very dark and a very bright, but I really like it. It makes it more interesting for me, the way that the colors kind of undulate. <laughs> from dark to light. I could really fiddle with it and try to make it look like the shading is all to the, to the one side and the brighter colors to the other, but that would take too much trouble. I just like the way it almost looks like it has a, um, I don't know. It just stands out a little better somehow with those bright red colors. So if you want to do it in a solid color, obviously there's lots of beautiful reds. I think it calls for Schoolhouse Red Gloriana Silk. But this yardage of floss is $4 for 20 yards. So I feel like it's a really good value. Hang on just a second. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. My youngest is doing puppy sitting outside on the trampoline while the weather's nice and my time is really limited. So <laughs> she had to take a quick break and the puppy went nuts. But I also wanted to show along with the um, Hands Across the Sea uh, sampler that I started, the Bristol Orphanage sampler, I made a project bag from the um, French General and I thought it matched the project. There's something about a long-term project when you know that it's going to be ongoing having a really nice um accoutrement set like uh these beautiful thread keeps thank you becky for sending those with a get well card i love that little you can, i don't know if you can see it super well it's an angel 
with a heart, but I um, only have one color, so it's really um, fun to keep that on the thread ring and put it in the pretty project bag. So these are again made in Vonna Pfeiffer style. I'll link her video below. Um, I'm thinking about taking off Velcro because things get caught on this a lot and I'm afraid I'll lose some stitches if I'm not careful. I have the same problem with zippers though. If you zip your linen into the zipper, you know, you have to be careful <laughs> with whatever you put it in. And I lined it with just white sheeting. I like, I don't like colored fabric inside my project bags. I've said that before because a lady um, on a video a long time ago was showing a red lining that had stained her linen. So I keep them muslin or canvas undyed. So there's that project. And I am going to try to do a little bit on that each day, um, at least for a while. I really am enjoying it. And then I have other whips that I wanted to share and a little bit of haul and happy mail and some um, plans and book talk. So let me get my whips together. I'll be right back. I actually misspoke. I said I had one new start after getting back from snow apocalypse or <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. It was a horrible week, but, um, I actually had two. So I had wanted to do this one for a long time. A viewer, Kathy Parker, kindly shared this pattern with me over a year ago. And, um, I saw a, um, Instagram post of, I think her name is Carol from Life with Miss Sassy. She hasn't been posting her stitching. I don't, or not been sharing her stitching, but I loved the way she did this on a natural linen. And, um, it's kind of hard to tell right now, but I think all the colors are going to show up just fine. And it is a really pretty simple stitch. This is just some 28 count Lugana. I decided what I wasn't being drawn to for the um, black summer cottage that I'm um, stitching from Priscilla and uh, Kathy is I just don't like that stiff 14 count black Ada. It's hard as a raw or hard as a board. So um, I think I'm going to restart that on some Lugana that I can dye charcoal or black. But for this one, I really wanted the spring colors to be um, lighter. So I'm even going to finish it the way Carol did with a little bunny tail in the middle. I have that around here somewhere. I, these are actually snowballs that we had from my mom, but won't that make a cute bunny tail <laughs> in the middle of a bow? So here's going to be the top, but it is a lot of stitching. It's not difficult stitching, but it's a lot. So we'll see how far I get on that this season and hope that I can get, um, the house and the tree. And uh, I am using two, uh, actually just one fancy floss. I ended up using the barrel cactus, which is kind of a unique color. I thought it has some variegation with blue and kind of a smokier color, but I ended up swapping out um, the colors that were called for. They just were too bright. I was afraid of that. I have a hard time with spring colors because sometimes they just kind of look way too bright for my palette. And this persimmon color by Classic Color Works is really pretty. But on the cover, the reason I picked that one to purchase is that door looks kind of like a terracotta and the rooster. It's used in a couple places that I thought would make a difference. And, you know, it's just kind of bubble gummy. So I ended up swapping it for $37.78 and DMC 21, one of the new ones which is what Beth Twist called for in Consider the Lilies. I ended up using a silk for these two, but I really liked these colors because they're much more toned down, <laughs> you can see. So I have a light and a dark. Instead of using that um, really bright pink and the persimmon, I'm gonna tone it down to this. And you can see that I pulled it out. In fact, I had already stitched the rooster and I was like, I just don't like that. That's where I pulled out the, um, the color that was just too bright. I did like the variegation on it. And if you want to use the called for colors, these are really pretty. A lot of people like brighter colors. I just happen to like a more dull. So that's just a fun project. My kids really seem to enjoy the um, Sunflower Manor. Emma said it's her favorite thing I've stitched. So I thought, well, let me do another one. They are so cute on that turquoise shutter I have. You can see it on Instagram if you've not seen it. But um, <clears throat> I did have that second start. So I didn't want to misspeak. I also moved on 
in my um, prairie schooler season, I had said the winter stitching the, so the snow might be a little overwhelming. And instead of continuing on, I just went straight to spring. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think it is. And this is on 28 Count Monaco that I tea coffee dyed myself with the call for DMC. I'm making a few changes here and there on the placement. The spring was supposed to be green and I made it the pink, but these are the called for colors. And I just really liked the palette. So I'm gonna keep going with that. And I said, I already have a little red window to finish it on. So I need to get a little farther, but um, I did have light enough to work on this without my um, art light. So that was another one I worked on while I was stuck inside in the office. And uh, I'll try to insert a picture of that here. I don't have, like I said, the cover sheet is upstairs. But it's a fun one. And I want to have all four of those done this year. Hang on just a second. Okay, sorry, I'm not sure exactly where I was. With a house full of kids and a new puppy, I am very interruptible. <laughs> so I think I was about to show you my whips that weren't new starts. Um, I had already been working on my preschooler one, but the spring one was technically a new start. And I already heard Dahlia outside the door trying to come in here with me. <laughs> I would never let her in with the needlework all spread around me, so she's just going to have to wait. Uh, but I had finished the border outline on Barbara Anna's All Creatures Great and Small. I really wanted to see the um, whole piece um, come together so I kind of had an idea. And I did a little more work on the house there, filling in the blue and the mustard color. And that was pretty much it. That border took a little bit of doing to get all the way around. And I'm finding that these leaves are somewhat um, key to me <laughs> being able to keep things centered. I don't know if you can tell, but the platform for um, Adam and Eve is not the same size. One is wider than the other, and I think it's going to be okay. Um, she does several things that aren't completely symmetrical. Like she'll have a different color flower here, and things will be different sizes. So Eve's just going to be a little bit more narrow, but that's the whole scope of it. And I can hack off this extra fabric if I want to. I probably will eventually just because it's less to hold on to, but she doesn't fit in the whole screen. So I'll probably just keep working on this house and more leaves going around just to kind of give me an idea. I was really having a hard time with this corner of the hill trying to make sure that it was working. And so I think I'm going to work in from that side. That's why I started doing leaves so that I can be sure that the hill is centered, that all these lines are <laughs> laid out. I like to do kind of like a, a structure, like a bone or a, um, I don't know the word I'm trying to say, just like a whole, you know, framework. That's the word, <laughs> a framework that I can just fill in and not have to be worried. Cause I got one stitch off here by the pig and then one stitch off past the pig. And then that made it two stitches off by the time I got to Adam and Eve. So it doesn't take much for things to get out of whack. That's why I have a woodpecker there instead of a regular standing bird. <laughs> My tree was way too far over, but it's a really fun, whimsical piece, so I feel like you can get creative. I'm going to have to make up a little animal to put in this hole right by the text there where there's supposed to be a squirrel that won't fit, and um, I feel like you can do that. I've said it before, but Barbara Anna made this up as she went, and then she charted it, so I really love that kind of fun, whimsical design about the way she worked it. Um, and I keep it in this beautiful bag from Daylene that she sent me a while back. So thank you Daylene again for that. And then my Hawkrun Hollow. I was just so determined to show y'all a finished block, but with a puppy in my lap. I'm not sure what she's up to now. I don't know if you can hear my daughter getting onto her my seven year old. Um, with a puppy in my lap. I just don't feel comfortable working on this piece. It's such a big piece of linen and Dahlia's getting really big. <laughs> so she wants to sit on my lap and I can't have this all out for her to try to, you know, put in her mouth or sneeze on. There's no telling. But I did get all of that 
stable filled in finally. You can see where I just stopped. <laughs> I ran out of this color um, thread here and I finally went and got some at Hobby Lobby the other day. And I um, spent some time frogging because for whatever reason, I filled that whole roof in green. Even the part that has a, you know, shadow that's or a totally different color. So <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, oh, the roof's all done. And then I looked and thought, what am I thinking? That's all the same color. So that got frogged out. There's a lot of like tonal differences here. There's probably four threads in that one um, corner. And I still, that was um, a missing thread to the mane on this horse. I had to get that from Hobby Lobby. So, but the horses are done. And then I'm working my way up to do that little, um, it's not text, it's actually trees in a box and the apples. And so it's very close and I do enjoy working on it, but oh, for heaven's sake, it takes so long. Just when you think, oh, it'll just be a couple hours and then that house took another day <laughs> or that stable took another day. So here it is all, all together again. It's so fun to, to look at. So maybe I'll finish that by February. I'm going to be working on it on Friday nights and I um, made this bag for it from some quilt fabric and some French general, kind of a harvesty color to go with it. So that's fun. And I think that's all I worked on. I had some stitchy kindness that I wanted to show, um, some sweet cards and a beautiful stitched piece from a friend and then a little bit of haul and plans. So let me um, transition there. Hang on. Okay, I had a good stack of cards here. This first one from my mom. It was just something funny. <laughs> it said, it may be hard to imagine right now, but you will get through this. <laughs> That's a good um, representation of how my year has gone so far, but that's okay. I am getting through it. And this was um, a beautiful card from Kim Lehman. I have my Kims both represented here and her channel is um, Barbara's Daughter. She had thought of me when she went to finish this and had been so kind to send this my way and send her prayers and thoughts. And I, I just really will treasure this Kim for always. I have it next to my other Kim, Kim Goldman, thank you for this sweet card, Kim. She had stitched me a little blackbird um, piece, and so now I have my Kim shelf. So thank you both of you so much for your prayers and checking on me and just being so kind. I appreciate that. I also had um, a beautiful package from um, Australia, this Tasmanian lavender lip and nail cream or lip luster and hand and nail cream is so decadent and nice and such a long way to come. Thank you so much, Fiona, for your beautiful card and your kind thoughts and prayers and uh, checking in on me on Instagram. I will think of you when I use this and it is very needed and appreciated. So thank you so much. And then the final one, um, and I will say um, for both of the Kims, their channels are fantastic. Kim Goldman is the contented stitcher and has been a friend from my very first YouTube video, even before I was stitching. So I um, think of her as a true friend for that reason. And then um, Barbara's daughter is fantastic. Just such a um, beautiful stitcher and creative and, and kind. So check out Barbara's Daughter if you haven't already and also Kim Goldman on Contented Stitcher. I'm very happy to know you both. And um, I don't think Fiona has a channel, but um, if you do, let me know Fiona. And then uh, another channel to recommend is from Rosebud Stitcher. And I have just been kind of binge watching Carol's videos because she gets a lot of stitching done. It's very fun to see all of her finishes and how um, disciplined she is as she goes through her plans. And um, she's a beautiful, beautiful stitcher. So she sent a little Valentine and um, some stickers and flosses. And I saw this floss and I hope you don't mind Carol, but my thirst, first thought was, ooh, something to dip in my dye bath. So <laughs> I will show you how this goes. These variegated ones that are a little bright for me turn out really cute in a dye bath. So I'm gonna be changing that one a little bit, but I love black coffee. I've never had that one before. 
and I love this one too. <laughs> I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I just know that I will uh, be changing it up a little bit. I have a whole bag of floss from my other friend, Tamara, that I changed and I love using them and I think of her. So thank you ladies so much for your beautiful notes and, and for all the others too that have um, continued to check on me on Instagram and told me that they're still praying for me and that they're still um, thinking to me often. And that just really means a lot to me. So let me, um, show my haul really quick. I just have a few things, but I like to show things that maybe, um, are a little bit more unique or special. This one, um, a lot of people have shown, but I still think it's really unique and special. <laughs> I got the, um, little people from this book. Like I said, I should have modified the arms. She had them in color. She actually has symbols all throughout here so that you can stitch these motifs in these colors if you want. She provides the, um, and by she, I mean Brenda Keys. Sorry, I assume everyone has seen this and heard about it, but Brenda Keys put out a, I guess an updated ultimate sampler motif source book with lots of different um, images. And I am just so excited about this. I plan to do some pillows with this and some different small samplers for my kids. And um, I really do like those colors. So this is a fantastic thing. You can buy it directly from Brenda Keys. You can find her on Instagram or um, Kitten Stitcher is where I bought this. So I saw that Teresa was closing shop for a little bit because of the um, Needlework Expo, but she will be back. And this was a pre-order that I did and she sent it like within a week. So it wasn't even really a pre-order. It was just a couple day order, but this was the other thing I found on her site that I think is really special. It's an older carriage house samplings, um, Kathy Barrick with um, a couple birds and just some fun man motifs. And I like to have different orientations of um, frames for my sampler wall, for my bird wall. And this one will be a nice skinny, um, I wanna say it's only this is a misprint. It says six X high. I think it's like 60 something stitches high. So it's really um, wide and skinny. And I think I can also use maybe the side of my, um, oh, all creatures great and small sampler, you know, just kind of a piece that you have to cut off the edge that's about that width. That'll be a really good use for some um, fabric. And I just thought it was interesting that it was on sale. <laughs> so I put that in my cart, Maria P. Oliver. And then I also have had my eye on this one for a while from um, Teresa's Primitive Treasures. She makes a board to put this on as well that I might be getting. And um, it's a punch needle. So I really like the idea of having a bluebird fractor with um, the other bird fractor that I'm working with. I got some Valdani that was a little brighter. You know how things look on, on screen? I thought it would be a dark blue and it's really bright, but I actually think it'll work for the, um, for the blue bird. The called for color was a gray, even on the, on the breast of the bird. And I thought, well, I want it to be blue. <laughs> so I got this denim color and I might get that board from Teresa, it'll go really well with my blackbird um, birds that are in a pot in that birds of a feather sampler and also the fractal birds. I'll try to put a picture here of those pieces. I just thought they coordinated so fun in a um, bird wall that I'm working on. So that one is on Etsy and you can get that as a PDF yourself. And that's all the haul I had to share other than my new uh, red sampler that I already shared with the French general fabric and let me talk about plans really quickly, and then I will um, have a little bit of book talk at the end. I don't even want to have a section in here called plans, really, <laughs> other than um, just to call it possibilities. Let's do that instead. If I say I'm going to work on something, then... Um, we lose power for a week or I catch pneumonia for a month. I mean, you just never can really make plans, right? So these are possibilities. Um, I wanted to kind of show you how I do a layout. I'm such a nerd, um, but I, I've met a couple other nerds like me, like Becky. 
<laughs> we make these kind of project boards, just kind of dreaming on paper of um, things that we'd like to make or how to look when it's finished. And so I had um, several possibilities in the next couple months, including these little rabbits. Um, and I'll try to put a picture of what this looks like beside me here so you can see it better. But these rabbits were from um, Liberty Creek Primitives, just like the uh, snowmen. <laughs> At the same time, I bought that pattern. And so I'm thinking about hosting another stitch along or sew along. Um, it's not stitching per se, but creating um, to make some bunnies. So if you're interested in that, I will link this bunny pattern below. I think Kim got one. If you're game, Kim uh, Layman and um, a few other people had said they picked it up. So if you would like to stitch a bunny with me, I will be announcing that in my next video, but I thought I'd give you a heads up. And I also have some little um, peeps that are just off of Pinterest. There's no pattern for them, but I think with the things I've made, I can figure it out. So I wanna to try to make some peeps and do some smalls that I had in my Primitive Stitching magazine, as well as some bigger samplers that I may or may not um, start. I had um, kind of not planned to start these two that I did. So whether I actually get to this fairy square, I have the fabric and a lot of threads, or um, Deary and Darling by Kathy Barrett. Let me show you this one really quickly. It's so pretty. It's a spring kind of version, I think, of the, the Christmas one that's so popular, the Heaven and Nature. This is a real similar feel, but it's very springy. It's NPIs though, and I'm kind of going back and forth with, don't want to do it in NPI. I might do a few. I did have a piece of fabric though. I had some picture of this plus fawn, which is funny for a fawn, right? Um, but we'll see. Let me know, Becky, if you're game, just to maybe get a, a little bit started on it. So those are some things in the near future that I may or may not work on. And then um, I will go ahead and say goodbye if you're here just to talk about stitching. I have um, a couple of announcements about a book, um, stitch along kind of club that I'd like to meet in March. And then um, just a quick testimony about some of what I've been through with another book that I've been reading. So if you are not interested in books or my testimony, then Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming to see what I've been stitching and to um, spend time with me. I hope you are well and that you have a great stitchy week. If you want to stay, um, I picked a date for the March um, oh, masterpiece. <laughs> and I meant to have it. It's behind me. Do you see all these books? My husband is such a book hoarder, and a few of those are mine. They need to go to his office, but um, I have the masterpiece back there, and I'll insert a picture of it here. Um, many of you have said, probably a dozen or more, that you would like to get together in a Zoom meeting and discuss the masterpiece. So my thought was March 25th at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, I wanted to try to hit both east and west coast of America. If it's not too soon to do it at five. I don't know if that's a little bit early, but um, we might could do 7.30 and that would make it 5.30 for you, but just let me know. Um, but definitely Thursday, March 25th at 7 p.m. Central. So be on the lookout. I will send out an email probably in two weeks time. If you do not receive an email with a Zoom invite, then contact me here on YouTube or um, in Instagram. So you can message me on Instagram. So I will be um, excited to talk about the masterpiece. There's questions in the back that she has very um, well thought out discussion uh, kind of prompts. So we won't go over all of those. It would take too long, but you might look over those and, and be thinking about the book as you read it. And hopefully by March 25th, that will give you enough time. Um, and I did want to just give a quick testimony. We've just had, I feel like such hard times in uh, 2021. And I read something that was really encouraging to me. My next book that I've picked up, my mom sent to me, it's called Becoming Elizabeth Elliot. And um, it is only one chapter in. <laughs> just a fantastic book. The 
biographer, Ellen Vaughn, spent time with Elizabeth and she's just very, um, what's the word? Very readable and interesting the way she um, presents what happened in Elizabeth's life. A lot of y'all may have heard of Elizabeth Elliot, her story where her husband Jim and other four other missionaries were killed by Indians in the 1950s as they tried to um, reach out to them with the love of Christ. They were murdered and um, her um, one of the sisters and Elizabeth and her daughter went to those Indians just a couple months later and reached out to them and forgave them. And it's just such a um, story of heroes and um, strong faith. And I liked one of the um, lines in the very beginning, and it wasn't even by Elizabeth, but it was by the um, intro. A lot of y'all have heard of Johnny Erickson Tata. I probably heard her story when I was a little girl, so I've known her story my whole life, but she was um, in a diving accident and became a quadriplegic when she was a teenager and she paints with a paintbrush in her teeth and um travels around the country talking about her story and how um she found the love of christ even though she'd gone through such a horrific thing and to continue to live with suffering and uh when johnny met elizabeth elizabeth elliott passed away in 2015 so Johnny was speaking of meeting her probably about a decade ago, but she said that Elizabeth um, came and sat down on her hotel bed and talked to her for a couple hours. And she said, suffering is nev never for nothing, Johnny. And the line that Johnny said that I thought was so powerful was she said, suffering should be, this is the way we feel about suffering today, the way um, modern culture feels about suffering. We should be, suffering should be mitigated at all cost. And if it cannot be avoided, it must be drugged, divorced, escaped from, or prayed away. And that just really hit me because as I've gone through these hard times, times where I even feared for my life for a little bit, um, I didn't really struggle with bitterness or anger. I was just afraid and anxious. And, um, I thought, God, just take this away. And um, what I'm learning is, you know, sometimes, hang on just a second. Okay, I really want to get this out. What um, lessons I'm learning with suffering is, you know, God doesn't cause suffering. Um, he's not the author of that, but he does allow us to go through suffering. Everything that happens to us has gone through his hands. And so um, he has used it and it hasn't been for nothing. It has definitely taught me that, you know, I need him every minute, every hour <laughs> of the day. And um, that he really is, sorry, I'm about to lose power. He really is um, the most important thing in um my life and so i am um, i'm learning through the suffering to not wish it away or try to um you know pretend like it's not there but just to to listen and to to slow down and i've been forced to do that <laughs> over the last week stuck with no power and no internet for a good amount of time just having quiet stitching time and thoughts and um you know we're still in a season of suffering with our canceled wedding and um, that was supposed to be Thursday. So uh, I appreciate extra prayers on the 25th of February, if you would. That's going to be a hard day, but um, we're moving forward and we're getting through all of this and I think it's making us stronger. So um, I pray that for you too, if you're suffering, if you're going through a hard time or a loved one is suffering and you're having to watch, I just pray that you would continue to draw close to God and and to um, be in his word and, and listen to songs. I'll, I'll include some songs that have been really um, a minister, um, ministered to my heart when I was going through the darkest times. Um, a lot of them are old, old hymns that I grew up on. That's what returns to your mind. So I'll um, insert some of those below if you're interested. But I hope that you um, have some um, comfort from that word <laughs> or some... Uh, 
encouragement. So thank you again for watching. I'm sorry if I rambled a little bit. I've had a lot of interruptions and my mind has been a little bit um, busy. So it's hard to calm down and focus. But I hope that you have a great stitchy month, as I've said. I hope that you find comfort in him and um, in Christ. And I hope that you remember Psalm 90 verse 17. May the favor of the Lord be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Have a great rest of February.